Hello, I'm Rob Walsh of Ocean Equipment. We manufacture NavPod waterproof housings for marine electronics. One of our new products that we're gonna to install today aboard the company boat Seawolf, we're located here in Wrangell, Alaska, is a star pod for the Starlink system. Most of the installations you're familiar with look like this right over here. Essentially, the Roam system, the smaller dish of the two, is the one that's 11 by 22 inches, and it has this kind of a mount that was really designed for an RV. The product itself started its life for the RV version and adapted for boats, as they later called it, Roam. But what they didn't adapt is really the waterproof standard. This is an IP54, and when you see other waterproof standards, like from Garmin and Raymarine and the likes, that are more like a waterproof IP67. So with the help of NavPod and what we do with most marine electronics is finding a nice waterproof housing for the marine electronics where you mount it at the helm of a sailboat, maybe a power pod on the bridge of a, uh, of a, of a the fly bridge of a trawler or a large motor yacht. So this is the new star pod right here. And you can see it is a very attractive, high gloss white, uh, well sealed, has fasteners here we'll put in as part of the installation. It can come with or without this tower that we have right here, an eight inch tall tower. The seven and a half inch diameter space on the bottom will fit many mounts from popular manufacturers who come up with the radar mounts and those TV antenna mounts like Seaview and people like that. So quite often we're seeing a lot of people take those 18 inch satellite dishes by Intellion or KVH take them off and they still have that mount and that mount could mount right into our seven and a half inch wide spot right here so this would be sold with or without this mount that we have well the first part of this installation will be to power up the star link like you would do if you didn't use one of our star pots so this is all live I have the cable separate here but what we need to do is to get it so this dish is in the 90 degrees to the post. This is where it got optimized for the satellites in this area. So in this northern, in um, Alaska, it's, it's pointing south a little bit. It really only needs to see, you know, a handful of satellites. It doesn't need to be completely optimized in the sense that it has to keep moving around. It's not like the old satellite dish that finds one single satellite. The Starlink sees a lot of satellites. Now, in an RV application with tall trees and maybe you're on the side of the building, that optimization is way more important than it is on a boat. On a boat here, we generally don't have a lot of things above us. So putting it in and locking it into that perfectly horizontal um, layout of it is what we'll do once it's inside the star pod. One of the tricky things will be is to get it, I'm going to unplug it, I'm going to restart it, and when it gets into a horizontal position, I'm going to unplug it, and that's going to be the goal. What I want to do here is this is the connector that comes out, it slides out, it slides down. I'm going to take one cable tie and act just like that base did and hold it tightly in place. Okay, so now that connector is not going to come out snip off this little piece and that looks like it holds it in there really nicely the cable will be straight down just like it was but this piece that cable tie is going to keep that part of the base um, of the connector in there like the base did now we're going to go ahead and take the rest of the star pod And that's how it's going to go. Now, once we mount it to the top, it's not going to be sticking out. It'll be right about that height there. What we're going to do first, just wanted to show you how that came together, but we're going to go ahead and take the top of the star pod right here. These um, rubber things came in the installation kit. Put those in place right there. That will hold the top in place and the fitting really holds it. It's designed exclusively for this product, so it has it right there. In addition, we have these pieces right here, and this holds, holds it in. There are four of them that come in the kit. So 
So those also come with screws. Now we're going to take the bottom, put that in place. This is a silicone seal. Okay. And nav pod has these tamper-proof screws in your nav pod wrench for the tamper-proof screws. So these will go by hand. And don't you don't need to over tighten them. Just bring it right into place where this just touches right there. Okay. I may come back and just check it towards the end, so I'll keep it a little loose for now. And there's eight of these screws that go together. Okay. Okay, I just went down below and we had the cable from the antenna plugged into the router. I now went ahead and plugged the router in. So it's going, starting to transmit its Wi-Fi. So in the Starlink app, I'm actually looking for the Wi-Fi. That takes a little time, but it will come up. Now, let's go find the Starlink app. Calibrating connection. Your Starlink just powered on. Network performance should stabilize after about 15 minutes. It's searching as we speak. And obviously what's happening is it's trying to move and it's not gonna be able to move. It still shows searching, could take a few minutes. talks about obstructions. It says Starlink is still collecting data. It usually takes about 12 hours to fully optimize. But you do usually get a, a reading pretty quickly. It does say about 15 minutes. So, Okay, now in a very short amount of time it just said online. So it came up online. I if I can look at my statistics now. There is um, a speed test we can run. It's telling me it's still collecting data and usually takes about 12 hours on obstructions. Okay, just said my Starlink just powered on. Network performance should stabilize in about 15 minutes. I'm starting to get some readings here now. It goes a speed test. Well, looks like we're getting a pretty good, some pretty good readings right now. 167 megabytes. I'm back 16 days later after we installed the StarPod for Starlink up on SeaWolf here. Uh, we, we cruised a boat uh, about 100 miles from Wrangell, Alaska to Ketchikan, where we are now. Uh, used it underway in one day. Actually, but the bottom line is everything works great. Okay, Pandora, playing movies, doing everything. I haven't experienced any kind of hiccups whatsoever um, with the Starlink inside the StarPod where the motors get obstructed because they're hitting up against that tube there. Um, when I look at the app that's out here for Starlink, in the beginning, as I had mentioned earlier, there was different signals that come up, obstruction, obstruction. It seems I've given up on that. I'm getting a lot less of these outages. Um, in the last 12 hours, there was one of them that said network issue for two seconds, no signal received for two seconds, obstructed for three seconds. So I'm, it's kind of given up on the obstruction thing. It worked hard to try to fix it and it just hasn't done that. So um, it's just left it alone. and. But the, the, you know, the performance of it, um, things show up on the app, but what I've experienced is um, not a glitch in Pandora, the movies, anything like that. So it's all been working out really great 16 days later, just want to report back. Thanks.